feels great. I really didn't think uh, because uh, unfortunately these are older paintings, but these are paintings that I've done in the past that I'm really um, proud of and they mean a lot to me because they reflect part of my life. And so during the 60s, I worked with my family for farm workers. And so this means a lot to me. And what uh, the whole idea of a uh, humble farm worker picking the stars, a thermal nuclear, a nuclear sphere <laughs> fascinated me. <laughs> and so I just said, okay, he's a star picker instead of picking. So it's almost a, it almost verges onto a storyline because a, a child's storyline. Because what it is is that you would say, well, where do the stars go in the morning? Well, in the morning, a farm worker comes out and he picks them off the stars. And, uh, and then as the sun comes out, he quickly picks all the stars out of the sky. And that, that, that's a story, that's like a child's storyline. But basically the painting has its own story. And basically when I do a, this painting here, like this one, uh, I want to show many things. And I, at that time, my wife, she, when we worked, she, was, she would be sleeping and so on. And so I have, this is my wife sleeping in the painting. And also, I want to have my son in it, so I, he posed for me. And so that is his face. And we have the farm workers here picking the, the harvest. And I have here the planet Earth, and I have a child on top, a farm worker. And he's looking at the Einstein, and, uh, and he's thinking, oh, well, I'm learning about the, the, the pieces of energy, nuclear energy. So that's basically the whole idea behind this. It's, it's, uh, and then also the, he has the bag of all the stars that he has picked. So that's, that's the idea behind the star figure. Well, this can go back all the way to the 60s during the Cuban Missiles. And I was a child and I remember seeing during that time, during the Cuban Missiles, it was actually the first time I, saw, I actually saw fear in my mother's eyes talking about a possible nuclear war. During the 80s, the Cold War, it was starting all of a sudden to get serious that all of a sudden it seemed like that. It was, we were almost marching towards that nuclear between us and Russia. And after and during that time, several movies were made. The day after, and some other movies were made of the, uh, the results of a nuclear war, the Holocaust, and it was just horrible. And so at that time, I started to do that. And that basically is the idea behind that. Behind the blue tomato is, is that. It's not, a, it's not a red tomato, and it's a blue tomato with a purple stem. And you have the, uh, the, uh, the you would think it's tomato juice, the red is coming out of the dots. It's, no, it's actually blood. And it's the suffering, and it's also right in the middle. You have a, a figure sitting there watching the mushroom of a nuclear war. And, um, and also you have the little bullseye underneath the tomato. Reflecting that, you know, the reflecting of the, uh, the dropping of the bomb. It's a little more um, um, a serious issue about nuclear war. And we have, during all this time, we've had, there's always this fear of a nuclear war, nuclear war, and yet we have what really blew, knocked the world on its knees was something else, smaller, something that we don't even can see. And that's what's fascinating. So you never know. History has a time. History has a time, has a sense of uh, its own ironic uh, ideas. And the reality is always stranger than fact. This year, this year has been a little slow, because every year I always would be preparing for, I would show in the fair, and I was fortunate to show here, and different different uh, shows, but this year, because of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the virus and so on, it's kind of, I have kind of lived in the human box right now. And I think a lot of us are doing that, where you live in the human box. But still, uh, the more, it gives you time to reflect and, and think about the art and, and, uh, and hopefully, and, and it does, it, it does inspire imagery and also ideas for you. Yes, uh, some prints I have done before. And I was fortunate, and I still want to get in, back into it more. I really want to get into screen printing again also. I did screen printing 
I, I did some serographs during the 80s, and also I also was uh, for 10 years off and on. I was a uh, t-shirt designs for for uh, for t-shirts, and also uh, do the um, do uh, print and multicolor color separation that type of thing. I think. The basic idea of that we have in terms of our culture, I had a friend, uh, Kate Jackson, and she kept asking me, we're going to get involved. And I dedicated my life doing my artwork and dedicating my life in terms of using the cappuccino as part of my subject matter. And I'm about to be doing it until, until the day I die. And as, I, as my style changed, I will continue using the cappuccino as a, as a theme. But for me, it is, it is uh, I think we, the best thing is we are living in, uh, in the valley, and the valley here is a giant web. We have truckers, we have from the very beginning of the planters, the seeds, the growers, harvest the fruit and vegetables. We also have the, the truckers, the transport. Before that, we have the take it to the packing places and have the, the people packing the, the vegetables and so on. I am honored to be in this valley. I love my valley because this valley here literally feeds the world. We have cherries that go all over here. We have walnuts that go all over. We have almonds that go all over the world. Our grapes go all over the world. And I can go on and on and on. And I think that we're all, we are fortunate to live in this great valley, which I love. I love my state and I love this valley. My name's Ruben Sanchez, and uh, I live in Merced. Born and raised, I was born in Fresno, but raised in Merced all my life. 